Hi, my name is Matt Fortunato and today we'll be running through the Range Rover Sport, the most iconic model that we offer here at Land Rover. Okay, so the model that we have here is a HSC Dynamic. There is three modes, so there's an SE, there's a HSC, then there's a HSC Dynamic. So the one in the showroom has painted side skirts with a black pack. A black pack generally does all the essence of the car, like your black badges, your black grille, your black wheels. The paint choice is called a Carpathian Grey, which is a premium metallic. In my opinion, it's one of the very best. As we venture through, you'll see the vehicle currently in a stationary position. It's on an axis height. The intentions are for you to get in and out of the vehicle a lot easier. When you exceed 10 to 15 kilometers an hour, this vehicle will self-rise to an on-road height. To further that, if you are venturing off-road, it does have that third mode, which is an off-road height as well. Okay, so the vehicle is currently locked and secured. You'll notice that the power folding mirrors are closed, which is a great indication to know that the vehicle is locked. In order to open it, the simplicity of just placing your hand in the center point like so will unlock and the power folded mirrors will release. As we venture through to the rear, the same door at the very back will do the same axis. So all four doors have the same activation. Simply by pressing on the little key fob, the car will lock. Simply by putting your hand on the inside of the handle, it will unlock. It's a great safety feature. If you only touch this door, only this door will unlock. If you grab the rear, all four doors will activate. In the aspect of you touching this and then, for example, changing your mind and walking away, this car will self-lock knowing that you have not opened the vehicle. Okay, so to continue through, we've, we've just gone through the keyless entry. The rear of the tailgate of this car offers a real unique feature. So the ability to be able to place your foot in a gesture motion will un unlock the boot and rise the boot. The same motion will also close the boot as well. Really great if your hands are full. Um, once the boot's closed, I will run you through a little bit of the backdrop of the vehicle as well. So from what you see, an upgrade from the previous model used to have a lot smaller exhaust. They've given them some nice aggressive looking exhaust, giving it an overall feature that's quite unique. Um, as we venture to the back, the wipers still existent, just a bit more of a cleaner flush, so they sit at the top of the car. Um, once again, reiterating the black pack, you'll see all the assets of the car all blacked out through here. When the car is on, um, it will have in, uh, sweeping tail lights, which is quite a cool feature that Range Rover do offer. This model and variant is an SDV8, so a majority of our, of our stock is diesel. Um, the benefits of that are from a towing capacity to an off-roading capability to a fuel consumption perspective. We're going to take a look inside the boot. Um, there's a unique feature that's offered within. On the right panels just here, there is an up and down lever. Now what that does is, it's the ability to be able to lift and lower the vehicle. So in the aspect of you saying, having a companion like a pet, trying to get the, the dog in a lot easier, you can lower the car. Also with towing, if there's a tow hitch on there, you can lift and rise the vehicle according to the actual uh, the trailer or the caravan or whatever that you're intending to, to tow. On the inside of the cabin, um, underneath here, we'll situate a full size spare wheel, which is great. Um, also, there's a substantial amount of accessories that have been recently placed on option. Rubber mat tends to be very important. It's great for just general usage. Um, you can also get a pet pack. Even things like a ladder to get the, the dog into the car a lot easier, um, with like a water bowl and everything. So you can check online for that as well. Um, within the cabin itself, you do have a blind that will cover over, personal belongings, etc. You can also release that through the top. Um, and then we'll jump through to the cabin now and we'll explain a little bit about the infotainment. Okay, so we've stepped inside the cabin of the Range Rover Sport and I will run you through the infotainment system. It's a total of three screens, um, two situated in the middle and one also behind the steering wheel as well. The focus will be on the top screen for the moment. Navigation, media, phone, the three main points of usage. With nav, once set in, you can actually set a profile which will allow you to have on the side tab a home button which will give you easy access to simple of a press to um, give you the route to get home. Then on top of that, once connected to Wi-Fi, which you can either do via hotspot or in your glove box is situated a SIM card, which will allow you to search the internet. So just like Google or just like a, a resource at home on a computer, you can type in an address, whether it be Melbourne Zoo, for example. It will then pop up on the side with an image of Melbourne Zoo, a contact number, and if there's a local car spot available for you when you arrive. Media, the ability to be able to listen to your Bluetooth, AUX, and also digital radio, if optioned onto the car. And the final one, which is phone, allowing you to receive call, missed calls, dialed calls. Venturing to the second screen, we have 
Apple CarPlay, great feature, also offering Android Auto as well. As I mentioned with the internet, once connected, web browser will allow you to search the internet when the car is stationary. Um, contacts, it's just like an iPhone or an, or an Android, it'll give you tabs with simplistic press of a button allowing you to access those apps. So the below screen will allow, with vehicle, allows you to actually customize the mode of uh, terrain that you're traveling in. So comfort program will focus on uh, general driving, so potholes, speed bumps, just general comfort, quite lenient through the steering wheel. As we venture to eco mode, it will then focus on fuel consumption and reducing rev range. And the final mode, and my favorite mode in a Range Rover Sport, is the dynamic program, stiffening suspension, heightening rev range. The main focus with the Range Rover Sport is that misbreed between a sports car and an SUV, giving you sharp handling, torque vectoring through corners, and this will activate that. Simply by pressing on the helmet, you can then focus on customizing your factory setup with it, whether it be engine, rev, steering, suspension. The middle tab, once connected to a phone, will then display your phone details and also the, the, the mode of uh, FM or AM or digital radio. The third tab is for seats, allowing you to choose whether it be base only or back only, whether it be heated or cooled on both sides, passenger and driver. You can option for the rear seats as well. And the final is climate. So the focus with climate is to be simplistic. So being as there's no buttons here, all you have to do is tab on to where you prefer the air to come through. So in this aspect, I don't prefer it directly on my face, so I have it just on my feet. And the speed to which I travel at, or the degrees to which I have set it at, is 17.5. If it becomes, say, too cold or the fan speed's not sufficient, I then can select the mode as to what fan speed it, it directly distributes. Okay, so the interactive drive display situates just here. At the moment, we've set it up with just a, a Range Rover Sport as the background. You can customize to have a different setup. So, as we venture through to display and into info panel, you can then customize to have a full map in visibility as opposed to an image of the Range Rover Sport, which is actually quite convenient in the aspect of you keeping your eyes on the road and allowing a full sight of what speed, what direction. On the right, it will detail what gear you're in. On the left, it will detail the speed limit and also the speed that you're traveling. And the bottom will give you your trip and kilometers. On the top right is auto stop start, which can be toggled on and off. It's situated about there. Furthering down, the volume is through here, simply by touch, and also by releasing to reduce the volume, then changing songs back and forth. This button here is called a customization button, allowing you to, on a short press, select a certain option, a long press to further that and select a further option. So in the aspect of you getting in and customizing this to the way you like, <coughs> excuse me, and also this to the way you like, it gives you that little bit of, uh, of tailoring. On the right, if optioned, you have adaptive cruise, the ability to press set will set at that speed and then you can detail on the left or right the, the uh, distance between the car and front, whether it be shorter or longer. Um, this here is a safety standard feature, it's called lane assist. By pressing this on or off, you can toggle to give you guidance between two lanes if you slightly veer out, the steering wheel will vibrate. The simplicity of the gear shifter is quite straightforward. So there's a lever on the rear. As soon as you grab that lever and bring forth, it will go through to drive. Handbrake will automatically release. If you place it back in park, it will re-engage handbrake. The same motion, once in drive, allows you go, to go to sport, which will heighten rev range and, and stiffen suspension. You can also manually shift negative and positive to change gears whilst driving. Once in R, which is reverse, it will activate sensors and rear camera automatically and also reverse dip the mirrors. As we venture down, traction control, speed limiter and the modes of height. At the moment we're in a standard on-road height. Simply by pressing either up or down will raise and lower the vehicle. On the right is a hill descent control and also low traction launch, which is great for an off-roading capability. The handbrake is accessible, it does situate here, but realistically you do not need to touch it. Venturing through the middle, there's a little, little gap in the middle, which is great for iPhone, so you can still utilize both bottle holders and keep your phone in the center. You can also bring this forth. Within there is actually a USB charging point and further storage. Okay, so Range Rover will focus on a gesture motion. The intentions are to reduce the amount of stress, the amount of buttons pressed, just the simplicity of things. So as you can see, the blind is currently closed. In a sweeping motion, you can gesture the blind to release, um, as opposed to holding onto the button until it's fully closed back. 
Okay, so this Range Rover Sport's been fitted with an ivory finish and a black headlining. You can option to have black um, and black seats, black roof lining. Uh, there's also a tan option as well. There's a couple of different specs that you can venture towards. The best, best advice I can give on the Land Rover website, you can actually factory or configurate your own car. Alternatively, visit the showroom here at 351 Ingle Street, Port Melbourne, and myself and our, my team members will be very happy to assist you and run you through exactly uh, what's an offer in these Range Rover Sports and plus sit down with you and show you different leather types and allow you to feel it, allow you to touch it um, and really appreciate what is exactly on offer.